Welcome to Garage Miss Adventures. I'm Doug. This morning we have this Stanley number 75 Bullnose Rabbit Plane. And it's in pretty rough shape, but we're going to see what we can do to put it back into use. It's got the original uh, Stanley Rule and Level Co. iron in it. And uh, these adjuster bolts are pretty seized, so we're going to hit them with some aero coil and uh, let it sit for a little bit, see if we can't get them loosened up. Alright, thanks to letting it sit in the coil for a little bit, uh, didn't even take any tools to take it apart. So again, when it comes to the, the sole of the plane, um, it needs to be very flat, but some of these um, imperfections, the, uh, the really bad divots, really won't make a difference in the usability of this plane. So you have to take it down to a reasonable level where it becomes useful again, but that's pretty deep, and if we were to grind that all the way out we wouldn't have much of a plane left so you kind of have to determine what kind of a restoration you're doing if you wanted to be a perfect user this will suffice but as far as a collector um, you know this was not a good start for a plane to restore as a collector but uh, it will be a great user by the time we're done So I cleaned off the little bit of remainder. It was mostly rust and uh, redoing the Japaning, but uh, um, it definitely adds to the enjoyment of the plane for me. In the interest of full disclosure, uh, I know you guys just saw the plane go into the oven. And here in a minute, I'll show you a good shot of the finished product. Of the japanning and um, you know with editing it looks like it just took one try but uh, it definitely did not to get this final product of, with the japanning um, process it took me eight tries and uh, that may seem a little bit excessive um, especially when you saw me get this one in our japanning video really nice in uh, you know two or three tries and that was my very first time doing it but since that time, the weather's gotten a lot colder. My mix has uh, been out in the garage, and um, it isn't in a perfectly sealed container. Um, so just several variables there that um, I didn't account for. So I ended up adding more wet ingredients. I had added turpentine and boiled linseed oil to my mix, and uh, had to play with those variables, play with different temperatures on things to get it just right. And uh, I definitely should have given up sooner on my first attempts and just started over from scratch. So the two things I wanted to encourage you, you know, when you're doing something like making a homemade mix like this and learning a new process, give yourself permission to fail. I've learned more through that process than any, any other way. Um, I definitely have read a lot that other people doing this Japaning have um, done on the internet and... Um, have learned a lot there, but have learned more through the process of failing my way through it. I mean, this is this is home mixed. It doesn't come from Lowe's. It doesn't have instructions on the back. Um, so you know, you just have to to do that process 
And uh, the final product is worth it, I think. Um, and uh, the second thing is, no one to give up. I definitely don't. And uh, I should have given up on the first tries. I kept trying to patch it in and repair it. And when I finally just gave up, after I'd gotten the variables dialed in and the ingredients in the mix right, wiped the slate clean and started over, it came out really nice. So I found it easier on some of these flat places to just go ahead and pan over them. Um, I didn't waste time trying to mask them off or anything. Because they are perfectly flat, I'll now be able to remove that Japanning off the areas where it doesn't belong. But uh, it has a bit of a texture to it, um, but it has a nice glossy finish. Um, you can still see some of the pitting and things through it, but uh, you don't want it to be too thick. Uh, overall, it looks pretty good, not perfect. So after I get the back flat, I reset the bevel and a lot of these planes that I clean up um, are in really bad shape and have really chipped irons. Um, so I actually usually start on the granite block with wet dry sandpaper and then move over to my uh, DMT diamond stones and clean it up to a nice even bevel. Um, this one was kind of half moon crescent shaped it looked like someone had uh, sharpened it on a bench grinder at one point but uh, we got all that cleaned out and it'll be super sharp by the time we're done we use both sides of the diamond stone and then finish it on 6000 mesh uh, glass Which is all sharpened up. Now it's time for a test drive. So when I was doing my research before doing this little restoration I found there's a lot of hate out there for this little 75 rabbit plane and uh, I think one of the main reasons that people mentioned was the discomfort in using it. The, the natural way to hold it puts the web of your hand right against the iron and it, there's just not a good way to grab it that feels natural. Um, but this little guy is meant for the awkward corners that some of the bigger rebate plants can't get into so hopefully we'll be able to put it to use. I'll put it in my my woodworking tools and uh, it's now razor sharp and ready to go. Uh, so it, uh, it's always fun to rescue one of these from the bin. So uh, if you enjoyed this video, we hope you did, uh, check out one of our other tool restoration videos, or if you're interested in the Japaning process that we used, check out this video right here. We'll catch you on the next video. Talk to you next time. Mm -hmm.